Leftover pizza. That's not very nerdy. It's okay, I got something for that. D nerd. Welcome back, nerdlings. Hey, it is Tom. And Lady Lee. This is Do You Nerd, a variety channel, and let us exemplify that by reviewing a book. We have The Video Game Chef. Now, this is authored by Cassandra Reader, The Geeky Chef, and I want to be fully transparent with you guys. Todd Conley of Quarto actually reached out to us to see if we would be interested in reviewing this book. So yes, this book has been provided to us, but this is 100% our review, our take of the book. Now Quarto has all kinds of fantastic products, tons of books, numerous IPs. There's stuff for adults, there's stuff for kids, there's stuff for the whole family there. Link in the description down below. Let's get started. We're going to make grog the thing you need. Grog. <laughs> Alright, so use your best tankards. Alright, let's try some grog. We have not added the syrup yet. We didn't put it in the bowl. We thought it'd be best instead of putting it in the bowl for taste to add it per cup to taste. Especially since we didn't know how it was supposed to taste. But we want to try it without any syrup first. So, huzzah! Huzzah! Oh, that's really good. That is, yeah. I wondered about the um, the limeade concentrate and the lime sherbet mm -hmm. like being too limey. But that pineapple juice really takes over. It does. That and the uh, the coconut yeah, rum. Yeah, coconut rum. I'm kind of afraid to put it in there. Like, mess I'm it gonna up. add a little bit of scum syrup. Look at this stuff. I mean, it this, looks like scum. This looks like scum. Ooh, that takes a lot of the punch of the uh, the citrus out of it, and it almost makes it smoky. Mmm. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think that's where the grog part really comes in because before it felt kind of like a, almost an islandy beach drink, but now now you got your grog. <laughs> well, that was a lot of rum. We've got a whole bowl, so we gotta get busy. I was gonna say I don't think I need a little more rum. Let's talk about this fusion of food <laughs> and gaming. Now, first of all, you're the one who does most of the cooking because <laughs> I'm terrible at it. You were very excited 
to check yes, this out. Yes, I love themed out cookbooks. First impressions though, hardbound books. Who doesn't love a good hardbound book? Good spine, mm -hmm. lots of color on the front. I just love the presentation of the book right off the bat. If you can't do a spiral bound, hardbound's the way to go simply because it helps it stay open easier. Not gonna, pages aren't gonna plop closed on you. And I did notice one of the things that I liked about it, it didn't matter where you were in the book, front, middle, back, doesn't matter. It stayed open. This one is really nice in that regard that you're not going to have to worry about. Your hands are dirty, you're cooking, and your page flops closed. And you're like, well, now what do I do? Now, very, very early on in the book, I love this little touch here. It lists out all of the things that you're going to need to try to cook the stuff in here. What it does is sort them out by common items, rare items, epic and legendary items. So the common items, that's stuff that everyone's going to have in their kitchen, more likely than mm -hmm. not. The rare items, if you just moved out on your own, maybe you haven't grabbed all this stuff yet, but most of it you're going to have, or you're going to have something very comparable. Now the epic and legendary items, chances are it's probably not gonna be in your kitchen, but maybe you know someone that has them, but it does give you a heads up of what you're going to need. So it's nice that this is at the front of the book. You can be prepared for all of this. Before each recipe, there's a really neat, fun little description that's going on there. It tells you a little bit of history about kind of the game, the time frame, maybe the food, the food from the games. On the flip side, it doesn't do a very good job of describing what you're cooking. So the problem is, oh yeah, I know what video game this is or what food from the video game it is, but you may not know exactly what it is. Like for instance, the power pellets, not really a good description of there what exactly you're cooking with the power pellets. So I do kind of think that's a downside to it. The other thing is maybe a little less of the words and a picture for everything. If you're not going to at least tell me what it is, if you've got a picture of the food, then I can kind of discern from the picture what I might be cooking. Then you kind of have an idea if that's something that you want to dive into. Mm -hmm. After that bit of information, standard cookbook fare here. You've got your list of ingredients. You've got your list of things that you're going to need. And then, of course, the instructions on how to prepare this. Some nice little tidbits that I think work really well here are things like the mods. Now, the mods let you know if there's a different way to come about this recipe or easy mode. Maybe if you have something like uh, some potatoes that you don't want to cut up yourself, mm -hmm. well, easy mode is grab some of those frozen potatoes and you're good to go. The other thing I really liked is if it does happen to continue on to the next page, it continues that gaming theme. It says continue playing, which oh, I always thought was kind of That's nice. a fantastic <laughs> touch. Stage two, poutine from Divinity Original Sin 2. The things you will need. Okay, the next thing that we're trying is the poutine. Now, this was an expert dish, so felt like there were a few issues. The first bit of uh, poutine or the gravy that we did was very, very thick, almost like a paste. So we went ahead and added more of the broth. It has much more of a gravy texture to it, but we figured we'd still try it out both ways because the first one was more like by step by step yes. of what the book told you told to do. what the book said second one i added the broth because it does say add broth to your liking so all right so there's the first one 
I mean, despite it being like a thicker gravy, it still has a good flavor to it. Yeah. And then uh, it's a good one that's more like a gravy. Yeah, not bad. I, I think it was a good call. Adding, Adding more some more beef broth. broth, giving it more of a gravy feel mm -hmm. to it. And we had mm -hmm. actual cheese curds too. Yep. You had the luxury of living in Wisconsin. Where this is a good dish. It is a very good dish. It doesn't taste like poutine to me at all. It's not, it, one, it's not the right color. It's not a dark enough brown. And it's just not, it's more, it's almost more of like an oystery flavor, like a, a, a rich, I, I can't put, I, I don't know. I can't describe what poutine tastes like, but it's amazing. And it's, it, this just isn't it. <laughs> but what do you think of this in a pinch? Yeah, I think it's a very good, fun um, topping for french fries. If you're having a party, it's a great way to, you know, have a different than ketchup or mustard or something on your fries. Stepping back to the directions and everything like you'd mentioned, the one thing I do like about it is it does break down the directions very, very easily. If it's something that a sauce goes with the dish, it says, here's how to make the sauce, here's how to make the main dish part of it, here's how to make that. So if you want to skip out on any one of those, it's very easily broken down. I am a baker. I'm not really a cook so much because I'm very scientific and I like exact measurements. This is how you make it. This is how you do it. Whereas cook, everything is more feel. So I like the fact that this one is a cookbook, but it still helps it be a little bit more scientific-y of breaking things down for you. So it's easy for people like me. On each page of the recipes, it does not tell you whether it's a main dish or a dessert or a drink or, you know, what type of meal it is. So that is a kind of a downer for me because when I'm flipping through a cookbook, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But at the back, there is a page that says meals at a glance and it does break it down there. So you can go to the back and say, oh, I want a breakfast main dish and you can find the breakfast main dish. Also in the back, there's a section called leveling up. Now this is very handy if you want to just stick to some of the beginner stuff. Everything is right here for you. It tells the page of what you're making. And then of course the normal and the expert. I'm going to let the expert take care of the expert. <laughs> My overall thoughts of the book was this is a really nice cookbook. There are some really amazing recipes in here. My thinking, though, is the person who created this book is more of an actual chef than just a hobby cook. Because these are some of these recipes are very intricate and in-depth. And they take some ingredients I've never even heard of. Or I I know that I'm not going to be able to get in my Midwest town. This is not a cookbook for for beginners. That being said, don't be afraid to try this because how do you get better? You just try things. But it's not a casual cookbook. The other thing that I noticed about this is it couldn't really decide what kind of book it wanted to be. Couldn't tell if it wanted to be an actual for real cookbook or something fun and kitschy and niche, which that's why I think we had some nitpicky parts about it because I'm looking at it more on the cookbook side of it. And I think you were looking at it more of the video gaming side of it. Fair enough. So I think that's kind of why we were finding things to kind of pick about it. Overall, though, it's a really cute book. Overall, I would give it a three out of five stars. Fair enough. Lacey says check it out. <laughs> Level three. We are doing a Jill sandwich from Resident Evil. The things you will need...
Whoa, that was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. You're right. Thanks, Barry. All right, so <laughs> the Jill sandwich. This one was a little tricky because, first of all, lady fingers were pretty hard to find in our area. So is lemon curd. <laughs> uh, but we got there. One thing that we had to note, the book says soft ice cream. I think that there's obviously some distinction between... It also between says two large scoops that between, can be interpreted. Yeah, uh, interpretation was a big thing here because what soft ice cream to someone else may not be yeah. so much for someone else. And, uh, I will say this was, this was the easiest one to make, the messiest one to make, and there's a lot of pro tips that this one needs, like 100% make sure you find lady fingers that are segmented, like the book <laughs> says. I didn't know there was not segmented lady fingers. That would have made making the sandwich a lot easier without the ice cream get a little too soft. Not that we've uh, <laughs> jumped into this just yet, but I already had a thought with the issue that we were having putting it together. I said, idea, by the way. instead of lady fingers, which I think that that's more for the gag of a Jill <laughs> sandwich, I thought maybe some like angel food cake that as the bread really part. And then the ice cream, get like a, a nice cheap half gallon vanilla ice cream, like in the box or something, and then slice it. Yeah, don't let it, it get nice soft hard, at all. Slice it into almost, you know, like sandwich like slices yeah. and put that on there. And I think, yeah, I think it'd be a lot that easier. would be much, much better. Well, I'm jumping in. Yeah, let's go for it. Messy or not, here oh, we go. Okay. It's really good though. Oh yeah. It's really good. Really messy, but really good. Okay, so this is uh, this is our first foray into lemon curd, by the way, and that's really good. I like that flavor in there. For the raspberry liqueur, we use some Chambord, and I do feel like I taste that a bit soaked into the lady fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I tell you what, if this is how good a Jill sandwich is, I'm sorry, Barry. You should have let her get squished. <laughs> good job, dear. Thanks. You did an awesome job <laughs> with all of these. Thank you. Well, my overall thinking of this entire cookbook is it is 100% not for casual cooks or beginner cookbooks, like I kind of said before. Looking at it, making it, there are a lot of things that they need to definitely give you measurements on. Like one of the, for the poutine, it said half of a, of a yellow onion. Didn't say medium, large, small. So, you know, that can be interpreted anywhere. So please give a measurement for that. Same thing with the ice cream scoops. I mean, I realize you can kind of gauge yourself for ice cream scoops, but it just says two large scoops. Who knows what that is? Uh, anyone who has kids out there, Think of how much a large ice cream scoop is that you would give to the kid, and then tell the kid, go get yourself a large yeah. ice cream scoop. See how much of a difference <laughs> there is there. The other thing is, there were some other complaints that I had, like in the ingredients list, it didn't list a certain ingredient, but when you started reading how to make it, the ingredient was listed there. So I didn't know to get that prepared ahead of time, so I kind of had to rush over and get that prepared. The other thing is, the poutine recipe, I know I complained that there weren't enough pictures mm -hmm. on that one. The picture and the ingredients needed to swap. Because Fair you point. had the ingredients on one side, you turned the page, there was the picture and there was the instructions. So I always like to double check my ingredients when I'm putting them in. Fair. So having the ingredients on the same side as the instructions, in my opinion, is a much better idea. Overall, this is a very, very fun cookbook, um, but it is not for the faint at heart. <laughs> Literally. Once again, any complaints that we have have been more nitpicky things. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's like saying a fantastic game could have been absolutely mm -hmm. incredible with one more save point or yeah. something. We actually had a great afternoon just trying out. It was a lot recipes. of fun. We had a lot of fun today. So this was fun. We got some great stuff. The grog is fantastic. Favorite. The Jill sandwich was great. Even the poutine, even though it was a little different, it was still great. So yeah, guys. Uh, Links in the description below, of course. Check out the book. And there are many other yes, fun, we're having geeky fun looking books at the other books the that she's reader. Got. So check those out and let us know if you happen to try any of those or any of the recipes. All right. Check you later, nerdlings. You want more grog? Because I drank it all, so you can't have any. Quark. Mm. <coughs> <laughs> Quarto? Okay. So, Tom, you could probably... Klaatu, Verata! <laughs> now, the Etlep, the Lepic and Epidary. <laughs> I swear we haven't been in the cooking cherry. <laughs>
Or it at least like gives you a heads up. Why can't I get that? <laughs> it's your last time, Tom. Level three. We're doing a Jill sandwich from Resident Evil 3. No. Not Resident Evil 3. No. Sloppy, Tom. You sloppy. Scratch that, Tom. Start over. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Now, unlike where in the recipes themselves, it doesn't... Uh, <clears throat> First day breathing, guys. Hang on. First day. Or main dish, or blah, blah, blah. Nope, not going to say blah, blah, blah. That's dumb. For you to kind of close the book part out, okay? okay. We'll just close the book. 